Cape Cod Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. This is Sunday Journal. I'm Dan McCready. This winter, the Cape got an unexpected visitor, the snowy owl. They've been popping up in unusually high numbers this year to the excitement of bird enthusiasts across the region. Joining me today is Mark Faherty, science coordinator at the Massachusetts Audubon's Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary, who will discuss this spike, what's causing it, and what it could mean for the Cape's ecosystem. Thank you so much for joining me today. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. For those who are maybe not familiar with this particular breed of owl, could you describe what the snowy owl is, what it looks like, give us some characteristics of it? Sure. Well, first of all, they're pretty amazing. Uh, They're super cool, Um, but (laughs) more scientifically than that, they're the heaviest owl in North America. Our local great horned owls might look bigger, but they're kind of more feathers. The snowy owl is a big, heavy Arctic owl um, and a very capable predator. And we see them just about every year. There'll be a couple around on the Cape, one or two, some winters none. Um, but but this year is just crazy. Uh, um, so these owls, many winters, will actually stay in the Arctic. I mean, they are these are serious owls that are adapted to living in pretty cold, ridiculously harsh environments like the Arctic in winter, where it's just you know eternal darkness and mm-hmm. just blowing wind, and and they're able to find food in these situations. So when they come down here like this, this is like the Florida Keys for them. Um, so very much an Arctic animal, very adapted to their environment up there. They're white, like many Arctic creatures. They blend in with snow. And right now, now that it's getting icy and snowy out there, it's getting a little harder to, to pick them out because now we look like we're in the Arctic, the way things have been freezing mm-hmm. up here on the Cape lately. And they, of course, would camouflage in wet quite well and all that. Yes. So now, um, so they're not an uncommon visitor to the region, it's not uncommon, like you said, to see them here, but this year, very high numbers. Right. So the conventional wisdom on, on what's happening is that, um, so like a lot of Arctic animals, their populations track populations of prey, in their case, lemmings. Lemmings are little rodents. They're like a bigger, fatter version of voles that you might have in your yard, digging tunnels uh, through the snow. Uh, not moles, but voles, which are a pretty common prey item for hawks and owls around here. Lemmings are a little bigger, and they're really the the hors d'oeuvres of the Arctic. All you know, Arctic foxes, wolves, everybody's eating lemmings up there, and snowy owls really depend on lemmings. And so, in a year with a lot of lemmings, they can adjust the number of eggs they lay up to it um, as many as a dozen. You know, other years they might only have four, like a typical bird, Um, but they can lay up to a dozen eggs. And there are some cool pictures. Some Arctic researchers got pictures, and and you can actually find these by Googling, like, you know, lemmings, northern Quebec snowy owls or something like that. And a researcher took this picture of a snowy owl nest in northern Quebec this past summer that was lined with like 70 dead lemmings just waiting for the chicks to hatch. The eggs hadn't even hatched yet. And so these chicks were well-fed before they were even born. So they know how to take advantage of times of plenty, and their population spikes as a result of that. And so what happens is the density becomes too high, and the Arctic can't support that high density of snowy owls in, in the winter. So a lot of the young birds come south. Um, they were really bunching up in places like southern Newfoundland. There were like 300 owl, snowy owls at a time seen there. Some of them launched out over the ocean. They really were just getting out of town because the Arctic couldn't support the numbers of owls that were produced this past summer. And so we're seeing this big spike. Um, Logan Airport is uh, probably the best indication of how many owls are around. Norman Smith, a Mass Audubon mm-hmm. sanctuary director, he's Mr. Snowy Owl. I mean, he's forgotten more about snowy owls than most other people know. I would consider him a world expert on the behavior and ecology of wintering snowy owls. For over 30 years, he's been trapping them at Logan Airport 
um, in part to remove them so they're not a, a hazard for aircraft. But in the process, he's learned a lot about them. He puts satellite transmitters on them, tracks them back to the Arctic when they leave here for the winter. He sees what they're eating, how they're behaving. He looks at them with night vision goggles, and uh, he really knows a lot about them. And to give you an idea, um, I think his r previous record was like 43 or 49, I think, mm -hmm. snowy owls that he removed from Logan and banded um, and removed. Um, this year, he's at 70 and counting. The winter's not even over. So he blew away his previous record, and they're still coming. So really a remarkable year and, and uh, a great opportunity to get out and see these super cool birds. And also, um, the birds that are here, the snowy owls that are here, um, they're younger, from what I understand, too. They're the younger owls. Yeah, you don't typically see adult males this far south. Um, it's true with a lot of birds where adult males will winter a little closer to their breeding ground so they don't come as far south. And so a lot of these birds are young birds that were produced this, this past year. There's sort of a glut of immature snowy owls, and so that, that's what we're seeing. And you can tell by how much black they have on them. An adult male can be pure white, just this gorgeous, ghostly, pure white owl. Uh, females and young birds have, have a lot of black flecking on them, and it can be hard to tell an adult female from a young male. But generally, we're, we're seeing mostly young birds and, and maybe some females as well, some, some adult females. And with this um, big presence here, um, what are they are, are they feeding on lemmings here or what what exactly has become their primary food source in this region well we right that's a good question <clears throat> and it's kind of an interesting interesting answer um, like a lot of Arctic birds they lead a double life um, so they they change their behavior when they come down here and these coastal wintering snowy owls the ones that we're seeing on barrier beaches here on the Cape hanging out in big salt marshes the Logan Airport owls they eat a lot of ducks, um, mm. even big, heavy ducks like common eider, which is the heaviest duck in North America. And that's a bird that we have tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of here on the Cape. And we also have thousands of American black ducks in, in our salt marshes. Um, we just have a lot of ducks here, um, especially concentrating around inlets in, at the tips of barrier beaches where the owls are often hanging out. And I think people are finding that they're flying out at night they're, even though we see them do, during the day, they're doing a lot of their hunting at night, like other owls. Um, so they fly out at night, and they're literally picking ducks off the water. Mm. And you think of ducks at night, they're sleeping, they're literally, they're sitting ducks. And so these snowy <laughs> owls are just, they're, they're flying out there, and this duck, this poor duck is sleeping. There's no predator, normal predator around here that's going to come out and pluck them off of the water. And this snowy owl just comes along and plucks a little bufflehead for an hors d'oeuvre or an American black duck or, or even an eider. They're strong enough to, to carry an eider back. Um, there's some thought that they're even eating Canada geese, which is a big, heavy... Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe that's just for special occasions, you know, Christmas, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. Christmas goose. Um, Norman saw one take out a great blue heron in broad daylight at at Logan Airport one day. Um, so they're big; they can they can take down some some big animals. And also, like you said, they took them down during the day, and that's not normal for an average owl to do. Right. So when you think about the Arctic in the summer, it's always light. I mean, they're above the Arctic Circle mm -hmm. in, in a lot of cases. And so in the summer, it's always light. In the winter, it's always dark. They can't pick and choose. They have to be able to hunt prey, light, dark. It doesn't matter to them. So if there's an opportunity, they will hunt during the day. But a lot of times, we're really just seeing them sitting around during the day. And people assume that they hunt during the day because that's when they see them. It's just that they prefer open habitats, so they're easy to find just sitting out on a like a little rise out in the out in the marsh or at the crest of a dune. But a lot of their hunting is done like just after dusk and, and in the dark and, and towards dawn, like a lot of owls. So now I've heard you describe uh, their locations as being marshes, dunes. This sounds like Cape Cod is just the perfect place for them to be. It is. And if you put your time in and walk a place like Sandy Neck, um, some birders doing a Christmas bird count for National Audubon. It's an annual event. And the Mid-Cape Christmas bird count includes uh, Sandy Neck and Barnstable there. 
and that was done on December 27th, and they counted eight snowy owls on Sandy Neck. Um, and so everybody is getting record numbers. Nantucket um, is is full of them, probably has more than anywhere. They got 30, I think 30-something 30 on their Christmas bird count. Um, Boston is full of them. Newburyport, um, Parker River National Wildlife Refuge, which is similar to the Cape. It's, it's big um, barrier beach, dunes, uh, big salt marshes. That's full of them. Salisbury, all of those marshes at the mouth of the Merrimack River. So they really concentrate where you have barrier beaches, salt marshes, places that concentrate ducks uh, and other prey that they're eating. They do also eat voles and, and small mammals, mm-hmm. like a lot of predators. If it moves and they can catch it, they're gonna they're gonna eat it. But they really seem to be focusing on on ducks in these uh, barrier beach environments. Now, l- like we said, um, they're not an unusual presence here, but this high number of them is unusual. Um, what kind of an impact does that seem to be having on the ecosystem? Because I imagine that's causing something. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. <clears throat> I, I don't think I don't think there's any kind of long term impact. Um, the, the things they're eating are abundant enough that they're not really going to be impacting populations of things like American black ducks or common eiders that there are literally hundreds of thousands of them wintering on the Cape. Almost nothing can really impact rodent populations. It just it's just not how it works. Uh, they reproduce so rapidly that. Um, you know, there, there might be a little bit of competition for some of the local wintering raptors like northern harriers, um, but I think that's that's pretty minimal. Um, I, I think it overall it's really just fun for people. Um, it, it, you know, it's just been great. I mean, it's they're the perfect gateway species. Mm-hmm. You know, your average person who wouldn't want to call themselves a bird watcher, you know, it's too nerdy. No, I'm not a bird watcher. Um, but going out to see this amazing majestic white ghostly arctic visitor at you know like west dennis beach has been attracting a lot of people you know that I, I feel like it's it's kind of an ambassador bird that can get a lot of people interested in birds it's like a gateway drug you know um so you you, you find yourself looking at these, mm-hmm. these snowy owls and Next thing you know, maybe you're you're looking at ducks and trying to identify them. Maybe then you bought your you bought a field guide, and uh, before you know it, you're trying to identify sparrows, and then you're so far gone, it's too late. So then you're a full-on bird watcher. So I, as a bird watcher and as as a conservation biologist, I like having them here. It's a great way to to introduce the public to birds, bird conservation, the importance of these barrier beaches, these salt marshes, mm-hmm. they're spending time in. Um, so they really are, I consider them an ambassador bird, and, and it's good to have them. Now, I wanted to ask, too, because you said that they're very adaptive, and they prey on actually some pretty large or significantly sized mammals. So the question I would have to ask is, are, is there any kind of a danger with the large presence of these birds to humans or their pets? No. No, no, not not at all. I mean, it, you know, they're not really any different than red-tailed hawks that are all over the place, you know, along the highways and everywhere. Um, they don't like trees. They tend to stay out in the open. They do turn up in yards on rare occasions. I, mm-hmm. Someone sent me a photo. I, I didn't believe them at first. They said they had a snowy owl in their yard, and they lived in the middle of dense woods in, in Brewster somewhere and far from the far from the beaches. And I was like, uh, I don't know what I don't know about that. And they sent me a picture, and sure enough, they had a snowy owl sitting on their roof. But they're not different from the predators we already have here. That are not a problem. I mean, we, the Cape is full of great horned owls, which are about the same size as a snowy owl. They're eating rabbits, they're eating squirrels and, and other small mammals. They're not really a, a, a problem for people. So like your little tiny dog, a walk on the beach, you should be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of a snowy owl taking out somebody's somebody's little dog. Um, if it if it happens, we'll probably all be watching it on YouTube. I reckon. <laughs> now, uh, with with such a large number, they tend to migrate away normally around. Is it April? I believe that they tend to. Leave? Yeah, April and May they'll be they'll be heading out. Yeah. Now, uh, d- with such a large number that we had, do you think that that's still going to continue? That they'll f- still follow that same pattern? Yeah, they won't they won't stay here into the summer. Um, they never have. 
Um, if that did happen, it might be a, an injured bird or something like that. But but they really um, most of them are are in pretty good shape, according to Norman Smith, um, who traps them, handles them, weighs them, collects data on them. And a lot of people talk about, oh, they're they're not doing very well. They're starving when they come down here, and they're half dead. A certain percentage of them do die, like any other group of juvenile birds. Mortality tends to be pretty high in general for birds in their first year of life. But Norman says that the birds are often really healthy when he handles them, and they make it back to the Arctic just fine. And if you go to Mass Audubon's website, you can see the tracks of some of his satellite-tracked birds. Um, and they take some pretty interesting paths. Like, you know, one year they'll go up the west side of Hudson Bay uh, and then back down the, uh, the east side. To, and occasionally they'll come right back to Logan the next year, um, which he calls an eruption echo, meaning if you have a, an er- eruption, IRR eruption, um, is called of snowy owls. One year you might get a smaller pseudo eruption the next year as some of the birds from the first eruption come back again to a place they liked like Logan Airport for example but yeah I think all of these owls are going to head back to the Arctic where they're where they're happiest if somebody wanted to go out find these snowy owls because they like seeing them they've become very popular where should they go how would they go about looking for them what what, what areas should they track yeah, so really any barrier beach um, or dune system is a good place to look. Uh, a lot of people have been going to West Dennis Beach, and it's been good and bad. There's a very accommodating owl. There have been up to three snowy owls there. It's very easy to see them because of the way that beach is with the parking lot and the road and the dunes there. People have been getting amazing photos, and, and the owl is pretty accommodating, but some people have been um, really not being very considerate and, and going right up to the owl, flushing it, trying to take pictures with their iPhone, things like this. Ooh. So people are enthusiastic, and that's good, but we need to use some common sense and some consideration for the other people trying to see them and, and consideration for the owls that, you know, they need to be resting. You shouldn't be flushing them. Um, but as far as I know, West Dennis Beach is still a good place to get up-close looks at the owls. Um, Sandy Neck in Barnstable there has been good. Um, Gray's Beach, Seagull Beach in Yarmouth had one within the last week, and off and on that's been a good place. Um, Coast Guard Beach in East Ham, uh, Nosset Beach in Orleans, if you have the means to, to get down there. It's kind of a big, um, a big barrier beach there, but there's been up to four owls there. The Provincetown Dunes, Race, Race Point, places like that. Um, so you get the picture. It's where you have dunes and salt marsh coming together. Um, it's, it's a good place to see these owls. All right. Well, unfortunately, we're just about out of time. But I did want to thank you so much for coming in today and talking with us about this very interesting and feathery visitor. So thank you so much. You're welcome. It was fun. My guest today was Mark Faherty, science coordinator at the Massachusetts Audubon Society's Wilfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary. The Mass Audubon Society will be hosting a snowy owl search at the Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary in South Wellfleet on February 8th. For more information, go to massaudubon.org. I'm Dan McCready, and this is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.